Let's talk about acceleration time graph. Much like position time and velocity time graph, acceleration time graph gives us the changing acceleration of an object with respect to time when it is in motion. Now over here we have some sample AT graphs that we will be discussing. But once again you can notice that along the Y axis we place acceleration and along the X axis we place time. That is the general convention. Now in this graph we have this line parallel to the time axis indicating a constantly accelerated motion. How? Because as the time continues to pass, the value of acceleration does not change. It still stays at A1, which indicates a constant acceleration. In the second graph, between the first time interval 0 to T1, we have acceleration A1, which is clearly constant, parallel to time axis. Then between T1 to T2, we have acceleration 0. And then beyond T2, we have acceleration minus A1. Now, how do we interpret this? We can say that the, for, the, uh, for the first T1 seconds, the object was accelerating in the positive direction with the value A1. After T1 and before T2, the acceleration of the object became 0, which means the object was traveling at a constant velocity. And then after T2, the object started to accelerate with value A1 in the negative direction. Now to exactly interpret it in a physical sense of motion, we have to assume an original direction of velocity. So assuming the particle was initially traveling towards plus uh, or, or the positive direction, the plus A1 acceleration will increase this velocity to a higher value and then between T1 to T2, the velocity will become constant when the acceleration will become 0 and then after T2, we will have a negative acceleration acting on the body having a positive velocity. So over here in the last section, we will have the phenomena of deceleration happening, the velocity will decrease. However, if my original velocity is in the negative direction, then a positive acceleration will indicate deceleration in the first section, then constant velocity and then acceleration in the last section. I hope this is very, very clear to you. So we cannot predict deceleration or acceleration of an object just by looking at an AT graph, but we can certainly talk about the positive and negative nature of acceleration from an AT graph. Now let's see what all information we can extract from an AT graph. Uh, area under the acceleration time graphs give us something called change in velocity. Now, how does it do that? We know area under any graph is simply given by fx dx between the limits x1 and x2 where we are finding the area. Now, for an AT graph, this will give us from t1 to t2 a dt which will give us velocity. This comes from the fact that dv by dt is simply equal to a. So, we can say v is simply equal to a dt and then we can integrate both sides and get this relationship. The slope of AT graph does not have much applications in kinematics, so we won't uh, discuss about it in detail. Let's talk about AT graph through a problem. We have to find final velocity of the object if it started at V equal to 5 meters using this AT graph given to us. So you can see we have an AT graph which is drawn like this, all the values are mentioned. We are supposed to find the final velocity if initial velocity is given to me. Now I know that area under an AT graph gives us change in velocity. So area under this trapezium structure will give me the change in velocity which I can add to the original velocity and I can obtain the final velocity. So this area can be simply calculated as area of this triangle which is this value, area of this rectangle which is this value and area of this last triangle which is again the same value. Now adding them gives me the answer as 200 meters per second that is the change in velocity delta v. Now if I add change in velocity to the initial velocity, I will obtain my final velocity which will come out to be 205 meter per second. I hope this is very, very clear to you. So summarizing what we just learned, I can say that acceleration time graphs are plots of changing acceleration of an object with respect to time. So we plot acceleration along the y axis and time along the x axis and how the acceleration changes, uh, we actually draw it on the graph, that's, that's 80 graphs for you. Then a line parallel to time axis indicates constant acceleration motion. So if we have a, a horizontal line which is parallel to time axis, it simply indicates that I, as the time keeps on progressing, the acceleration value is not changing. This indicates we have a constantly accelerated motion. Next, line parallel to acceleration axis is not possible because it would indicate the particle is changing its acceleration in no time, which means that if I have a line parallel to y axis vertically upwards, it will indicate that the value of acceleration changed without any change in time. But uh, in reality, we know it's not possible because for any physical phenomena to happen, some amount of time has to be clearly expended. Next, area under AT graph gives the value of change in velocity. 
so it's a very important concept it does not give you the absolute value of velocity but it gives you the change in velocity so you have to add that change to the initial velocity to actually obtain the final velocity the slope of at graph is not of much use in kinematics and we won't be talking about it in detail i hope this was very very clear to you thank you